tough, we're brave, and we can withstand all kinds of slander, ridicule, and persecution, but we have to come inside when it's cold. The story is a story of a guy who was, was in a mountain, and he was climbing and walking through a valley, and he shouted. He was on one side of this, of this great, difficult crossing, and he asked a question to a person who saw on the other side. He said, hey, can you tell me how to get to the other side? And the guy shouted back at him and said, hey, you're already on the other side. <laughs> so we're here this morning because we're trying to get to the other side. But the question is, what if we're already on the other side and we're in a safe place? We're here and we we'll thank you for being part of the re-election um, uh, presentation of Councilman Tanel Atkins. Yay! And we need, to start Yay! And we need to start out with a prayer to seal the other side. Yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you this morning because there are so many places that we could be and there are so many things in this world that are still going on. In the midst of all of it, Lord, we still need protection. Protection over our families, our communities, our homes, and Lord, our leaders. So we pray this morning a hedge of protection. Put a fence around those who are being elected and re-elected to do great things. Thank you for the vision that you have given Brother Atkins, and we thank you for the supporters that support that vision. And Lord, sometimes we all get weak and we need strength and we need support from those who know our history and those who understand our destiny. So we just thank you this morning for bringing us together. And thank you, Lord, for such awesome, wonderful weather. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Rawlings. Uh, I have had the honor to serve our citizens uh, for uh, more than seven and a half years. Um, one of the great pleasures I have had is getting to know uh, other council members and other people that I didn't know before I started this venture. One of those uh, individuals was Tanel Athens. And there is no question in my mind that Tanel has been an unbelievable support uh, to the, the citizens uh, of District 8 and uh, to the citizens throughout our whole city and to me as mayor. Uh, if you know Tanel, you, you love him because Tanel's heart is in the right place. He wants to do what's right and uh, he uh, epitomizes what I tell my kids. I say two things. Work harder than the next guy and do the right thing and be nice to people. And that's what he does. He works day and night. At 5.30 in the morning, he's on the phone till, till uh, midnight. He takes care of his family. He takes care of the interests of this city. And uh, he has, uh, in many ways, taken care of me, too. So personally, uh, I want to say thank you. I couldn't have done this job without his friendship and without his support. But knowing that it's not about uh, each of us, it's about our city, it's an important issue that is coming up this May. A major city council election is taking place. Many members are leaving and new ones are coming. And we've got to make sure that we have uh, a strong foundation in this city. And that's why I uh, appointed uh, Mr. Atkins uh, to be uh, chair of economic development and housing. Uh, that's why I go to him when there are tough issues and I get his advice. And you know what he does? He doesn't just off the, the top kind of give me an opinion. He says so often, I need to talk to people. I need to talk to citizens. And he gets back into the community and talks to people. And then he, his, his point of view is, has the wisdom of uh, transparency and of a community that is remarkable. Tanel has meant uh, a lot, not only because he is going on year 11. This would be year 11 if he gets reelected. When he gets reelected, okay? When he gets reelected. And there's not a lot of folks like that. Miss Grayson is in that camp. 
And, but uh, uh, Tanel has, he, he doesn't mean a lot for, just for that reason, but where he came from and, and throughout the city of Dallas, um, uh, there at Bishop Dunn, at SMU, uh, as a working professional here, and now and later in his life he's giving back. That's a great story that we should all be proud of, okay? And he loves uh, this city more than I can uh, uh, even imagine a person does. So it is my great honor uh, to endorse uh, the candidacy of Tanel Atkins for here, Dallas here. City Council. Here, 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 here. Here, here. Things are happening. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, Pastor, I do believe we're on the other side, but we got big mountains to climb, okay? <laughs> We got big mountains to climb and we're making headway. And uh, we're going to do that with Tanel Atkins' leadership. God bless you and thank you, Tanel Atkins. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's indeed an honor and pleasure to be here. Um, still, some of uh, Council Member Atkins Thunder say, oh, we're going to thank the Lord for another day. He always starts off with that before he responds. And that says a lot. That's important for him to recognize uh, he is because of who he is. And so uh, it is my honor and pleasure to be here this morning. Um, I have had an opportunity to learn a lot from uh, Council Member Atkins. As the Chair of Economic Development and Housing, I serve on the same committee. And I can, I can tell you, I've seen him spend time, <coughs> nights, days, going through contracts, making sure that your interests, especially those who live in District 8, but Southern Dallas in particular, are taken into consideration as we move forward with our new directions relates to economic development and housing. Uh, many of you know, because a lot of you here are very active in the community, Camp Wisdom divides District 3 and District 8. But Council Member Atkins has been that bridge to make sure that Camp Wisdom receives and the Redbird area receives the things that it so deserves. And so I'm here. Uh, as Mayor Pro Tem, and I want to thank him because he nominated me to be Mayor Pro Tem. And that was extremely important for us to show unity in that way. And Councilman Atkins, who had been there and had the experience and had the knowledge, so it was important uh, to be able to provide wisdom and play a role in providing wisdom. He knows from his time on the council, Mayor Pro Tem has a whole lot of responsibilities working closely with the mayor. Uh, and so he wanted to make sure that he spent this first term focused on the issues of District 8. And so he sacrificed uh, his desire and his ability to, to serve in that capacity, to support me in that capacity. So because of that and because of the relationship we've developed, I am here to endorse Council Member Tanel Atkins for District 8 for re-election. So our colleague, and it seems like so welcome back to Council Member Arnold is here at District 4, and so she has something that she's going to present at this time, so Councilman Warner. All right, all right. Good morning. We can do better than that. Good morning. It is a beautiful morning. It is a cold morning. Uh, only in your mind. It's a hot topic today for the uh, re-election of Mr. Tanel Atkins. So, uh, as Wendy Williams would say, that's a hot topic. <laughs> Uh, I have been asked to stand in the, in the place of a man that I have honored and respected for so many years, and I am extremely nervous because, <clears throat> excuse me, I know that I cannot do justice to this statement, but I am going to try. Uh, I have been asked to read, <clears throat> excuse me, on behalf of our beloved Dallas County Commissioner John Wally Price. Yeah, yeah. Mr. John Wally Price endorses City Council mem member to nail Atkins as he seeks re-election. Although the regular court meeting and the duties of my office as a county commissioner would not allow me to stand with him today, let this serve as my unfettered and absolute endorsement of Councilman Tanel Atkins as he makes his case for re-election. To represent the people of District 8 as he has been selected 
he will continue to serve with the vision, the work, ethic, and the earnest concern for his constituents. Over the past year, Councilman Atkins and I have worked shoulder to shoulder toward the creation of the Transportation Management Association, TMA, through our efforts along with DART and a litany of other public and private operatives, we have established a board of directors and secured the funding for the inaugural two years of operation. Let me stop right now and, and, and let's ask that you give it up for that, all right, for that accomplishment. This deployment is integral to the continued growth of employment opportunities in and around the Inland Port and other areas in Southern Dallas. In as much as our districts overlap, we, have, we are forging a new conduit of, let me get this together here, conduit of commerce by enhancing public transportation in the southern sector. This new venture will serve as a welcome additive to one of the most historically underserved areas in Dallas County. Tanel and I have worked together for a number of years, and I need him to complete his latest phase of improvements to our shared communities. So I am asking that you join me Dallas County Commissioner John Wally Price in supporting Tanel Atkins in this spring. His, ex his experience is vital to the growth and development of Dallas County. Once again, Tanel Atkins, re-election Dallas City Council District 8. Give it up for him. You all can do better than that 11 years. Added that little bit. I don't know if the commissioner would have done all that, but I do know that uh, it is with honor, as I said once again, that I've been asked to stand in the place to give the words, and so I'm extremely honored and also honored to continue to work with you, Mr. Tanel Atkins. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Peter Brodsky, the majority owner of Redbird. And I've got the honor of introducing the man of the hour, Councilman Atkins. You've heard from, from several people who've worked with, uh, with Councilman Atkins as colleagues. I want to tell you about my work with him as a partner, because that's really what he's been on this project. We, th we think this project is going to provide quality amenities to this community that needs them and wants them and deserves them, but it is not an easy task. It wouldn't have happened without the vision that Mayor Rawlings set out for Grow South. It wouldn't have happened without the support of, of, uh, of Mayor Pro Tem Thomas. But let me tell you who got this done, who's getting this done, it's Councilman Atkins. <laughs> Mayor Rawlings talked about 5.30 in the morning, let me tell you, my phone's blowing up at 4.30 in the morning. And that's only after it stopped blowing up at about 1.30 in the morning. Uh, I will tell you that sometimes he's a taskmaster uh, because he's got high expectations for the quality that this community deserves, and he's going to make absolutely sure that what's delivered is what this community needs and wants. He works tirelessly with me and my team to make sure that we've got the resources we need. He's a partner in crafting the vision. And when we needed help from the city, support from the city, that was a very complicated process. He quarterbacked that project through the city and ended up with a unanimous vote to get us $22 million so that we can begin construction on this process, Prince Project. And that, so come the end of March, when you see dirt flying in that parking lot, you, you think about the work that Tanel Atkins did, and, you, and I want to make sure you understand that he is responsible for the progress that's going to happen on this property. <laughs> the last thing I'll say about, about him before I introduce him is the following. He's a very wise man because it was really freezing outside, and he made the last-minute decision to move us inside. <laughs> 
that shows me, and it should show you, that he can think on his feet, he can adjust to the current situation, he can change his plan, and he's got the best interests of the majority of the citizens at heart. So thank you very much, and welcome to Nell Atkins. Uh, first, let's get on to the God. It's a blessing to be here. It's number one. Um, last time I took this journey, uh, my lovely wife was not with me. She was in the hospital for many, many months. And thank you, Ms. Atkins, for being here. Today. There are many public officials. Uh, Mayor Mike Ronald, thank you for coming today. Uh, Alan Magoo, thank you also, my colleague. Lee Kleiman, thank you for the barbell tip. That of you, Ray Bird, and we're going to work together. <laughs> uh, Scott Grigg, thank you, Scott, for helping me through the housing project policy. Rick Callahan, thank you also. Uh, my favorite state representative, Helen Guinness, thank you for being here. And there are many more, and also Carol Lana, thank you for coming back. Um, we almost had a quorum here, right? <laughs> no, not no, not running for mayor. Not running for mayor. Not me. Uh, you know, I first I first want to thank you for bringing me back to Dallas City Council. In the last election, I ran on the platform. Then are uh, doing more for the district and also making sure our district is represented by your choice and not subject to under influence from entry from other part of the city. I firmly believe we need leadership from District 8. In order to be sure our voice are heard and we have a chance of making progress together, no one had the same level of experience representing District 8 on the in-depth knowledge of how the city worked than I do. I have been passionate about our city and district for many entire career in public service. I still wake up excited every day. I am working hard for you as chair of the Economic Development and Housing Committee and the member of the Committee of Mobile Solution Infrastructure Sustainability and Government Performance and Financial Management. We are making real gain the $22 million here at Redbird. We are bringing more jobs to the end of port with Visaprint, also with Discount Tire. We had a Chipotle, now we got a Starbucks. All right. That not only serving you coffee, but also training our youth yeah. for the better career. Yeah. We also installed a much leader traffic light, Ms. Armstrong on Polk and Carrollwood that were most accident prone in that location. Yeah. It's dark now. Yeah. We're also working with Commissioner Price to make sure that we have people, citizens, and dollars to have transportation to get to work. Jobs. We got to have jobs. Yeah. And we do have jobs. But we also got to fight transportation. And I want to thank Commissioner Price and Gary Thomas for working together to make sure that we will have the avenue to get to those jobs and then the board. We all talk about trails. Now we have UNT. We got a trail six will be connected from Runder Spring to Glendale Park, cross Joppin, also cross to the golf course. That's a trail that we can hike, we can walk, we can bring community together. But also we got a Brian Nelson. You know, we have roughly over two or 300,000 people come to Pleasant Grove to, for the first time to see a great city that we are not a tale of two cities. That is a myth we're gonna portray and that's gonna disappear. We're not gonna be a tale of two cities. We're gonna be one great city, east, west south and north we also talking about policy economic develop policy we are going to have the policy that gonna make up a realize that 
all these times we talk about the tale of two city, we're gonna bring policies together to make sure that we have high rise, hotels, five star restaurant, south of thirty, where fourteen percent of the population, fourteen percent of the tax base, and almost fifty percent of the population is south. We are gonna be a strong city. We're gonna to build together as a community, as one, as one community, not two communities, not three or four, but one as a whole. We also partner with Casey Thomas. We talked about the seniors. The trip we went to San Antonio, and we're looking at that we are growing younger, not older, <laughs> and better, like wine, aging together. But we realize that we do have a duty for our seniors who are over 60 years of age. And that's why Case and I went to San Antonio and came together and said, we got to make programs for our seniors to make sure they got help, the right eating, the nutrition of life. And that's why Well Med is sitting over here right across the street. It's not for you, it's for us. Thank you, Casey Thomas, for that vision to go down to San Antonio to do that. We also talk about unemployment. Our unemployment is down in the city of Dallas. Believe it or not, it's down. We need more affordable housing. And Scott, you said that, more affordable housing all over the city, not just one part of the city. We need to make sure the loose dogs that is running loose and we know that Peter, thank you, what you're doing with Spade and Newton, that we got to make sure that our children is safe. Buck trash is another big deal. We got to stop passing by the trash in the neighborhood and just pick it up. Amen. Just pick it up. Yeah. Just don't pass it by, just pick it up. You got to come back anyway. Just pick it up the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Infrastructure. Infrastructure, UNT, we've been working, we've been talking about UNT for many, many years. Now with Kim Horn, we are working, we have a design for infrastructure, and UNT is going to be our upper middle class, higher learning, education, 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 UNT, Paul Quinn College, Cedar Valley, DIC, working together one that we are going to have a great educating corridor. Thank you, Mayor Rollins, for, for that dream. <coughs> Bella Code Enforcement. We got to have Bella Code Enforcement in the city of Dallas. Potholes, streets, you know. We think about streets, but you got to have good street to get to work. Sometime I remember State Representative Helen Giddens came to my office and I loved the car. And he said, it's just a crying shame that I hit a pothole. <laughs> and, I, and what you gonna do about it? I said, just don't go that direction anymore. <laughs> go another direction. <laughs> uh, my goal is uh, to continue to work that will take the myths out of to tell the two cities. And that means ensuring that economic development in the southern sector move at a faster pace. In closing, look at this room. We have the community, the public officials, the business, the clergy in this room why we cannot have a great city. If we can come together in this room, we can come together as a city. And we think, and I think, and I really believe, we done did many studies, had many task force. There are many books on the shelf. They're collecting dust. We already know the road map. Let us forget the studies. Forget the studies. 
forget the task force and make a reality. We had a study here at Redbird Mall, the ULI study. 2007 is 2019. Wow. 2007 is 2019. And it said this is what we need to do to have a great mall. We knew it all along. I cannot wait to continue working with and for you, my neighbors and friends in District 8. I will seek re-election and I'm asking for your continued support and your vote in May 2019. Thank you and God bless you. Very in a portion, you can dismiss. <laughs>